we look at the frequency span around 40 kilohertz, which is where I'm going to put a carrier, from 30 to uh, 50 kilohertz here, 40 will end up here. This is the amplitude, and this is the uh, frequency, as opposed to an oscilloscope, which will give you amplitude and time. So we're looking at frequency here. As you see, there's no signal here, so this is a situation where nobody's on the frequency, and therefore there's no uh, no signal to look at, and there can be no communication because you don't know if somebody's there or not. However, if I turn on a signal, there we go. As you see, we have uh, an amplitude here, and you see the noise level come up here around this carrier, just because. Uh, the carrier has some uh, um, noise, etc., on it. But anyway, now I know one thing. Somebody you know, out there has a transmitter that's transmitting. Don't know much else about it except that he's in. He's on 40 kilohertz, and uh, we could communicate by me turning that signal on and off. So if I turn it off and on and off and on, and if we prearrange what uh, three on and offs means, then uh, he would know that uh, he uh, is telling me whatever he's going to, whatever he's telling me. Maybe five means something else, maybe six means something else. And that's uh, sort of the origins of what Morse code is trying to do. It turns things on and off in a particular sequence with particular lengths, either short lengths, which we call dots, or long links, which we call dashes, um, and uh, a uh, Morse code signal will, will show that. Now I'll sort of demonstrate that here by changing the um, mode here by adding some modulation to this signal. Okay, here we have uh, the CW signal, and I'm going to uh, Change this to maximum hold here, which will paint a picture of what that looks like because we're sweeping across, we don't always catch it when it's turned on. Now you see that uh, the carrier itself uh, is clean, and uh, I've got this in a percent mode here, so 100% on when it's on, and uh, the sidebands that uh, are caused by this CW signal are obviously very, very low here. They aren't uh, very strong at all. Less than 10%. So at least 10 dB down. Um, looks like more, more than, more like 20 dB down. Uh, so that's a fairly clean signal. And uh, the bandwidth here, well, these are each 2 kilohertz. Because we got 2 plus 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10 kilohertz and minus going this direction. So minus 10 kilohertz. So that's two, so halfway is is uh, one. And so we're uh, in the about the uh, 200 kilohertz, uh, uh, 200 hertz, excuse me, um, level uh, at the 20 dB points, which is quite narrow. Oh, and by the way, this is uh, like transmitting uh, 10 dits in a second. So very, very rapid uh, CW, or shall we say, Morse code type signal here. Uh, Ten uh, dits in a second. Just uh, audible as a different, uh, each one is being different. Beyond that, it sort of blurs together and sounds more like a tone. Here we have an AM uh, signal that is amplitude modulated with a sine wave. This is 3 kilohertz down. This is 3 kilohertz up. This is the carrier. You notice it's at 100% up here. These are at 50% because half of the energy is in the sidebands. And uh, you see our frequencies are 3 kilohertz down, 40 kilohertz, 3 kilohertz up at 43 kilohertz. So basically with an AM signal, you have the same bandwidth as the twice the highest modulating frequency 
But if there's distortion products, they'll end up uh, over here and over here. And uh, typically on a transmitter, you will have some distortion. But let's say it's here and here. That's 6 kilohertz wide uh, for a minimum uh, bandwidth for 3 kilohertz, which is usually the highest frequency of uh, speech that we allow to go out over the air. Um, and so, um, generally speaking, you'll want to be, uh, the edge of your next AM channel will want to be down here somewhere. So your carrier would be off the screen slightly. And uh, on this side, same thing. Uh, the uh, lower tone wants to be somewhere in there. And the, uh, again, the uh, carrier for that uh, station would be uh, up. So in 20 kilohertz, you can have maybe two signals, but uh, certainly not three. If we uh, switch to FM, you see, and uh, we've got a 3 kilohertz uh, modulation tone, plus we have um, 3 kilohertz deviation, so we have a carrier here, a uh, sideband here, and a sideband here, and as you see, it's 37, 40, and 43 again. So those are in the same places with AM. Um, but this is a low modulation index, as they would say. Uh, and FM would usually be a modulation index of 1.5 to 3. But let's uh, look at this at least. And you see that this uh, sideband has come up, as has this. And there's a slight uh, blip here and a slight blip here. So this is overall a wider signal than the AM signal. And if I go and change the deviation to uh, um, 5 kilohertz, which is a normal deviation situation, you see that the uh, you see that the uh, carrier is suppressed somewhat and going into the math of that is not in the scope of this uh, demonstration but the sideband here has come up and here and these sidebands have also come up to about almost 40 percent somewhere around 38, 35, 6 percent and these have come up so you have a wider signal um, so that's uh, the nature of FM, is, is to spread the energy over more uh, bandwidth. And because of that, um, you have some advantages. But the disadvantage is that you have a wider bandwidth for the same modulation frequencies. In this case, the audio is up to 3 kilohertz maximum. As you can see here, the frequency is shifting on this FM modulation goes wider for lower frequency, then narrows up for a higher frequency, then wider for a lower frequency. And this is based on the amplitude of the uh, modulating signal. Now this is slowed down so you can see it and also um, we're just sweeping across and catching uh, uh, s different frequencies as they occur here. But uh, you get the idea that uh, the signal is not amplitude modulated, it is frequency modulated.